Okay, so I got a new point, 3, negative 3, 2, and a vector negative 1, 2, 0. And what do we say? So we're going to make a position vector out of that point. We're going to make a position vector out of that point. That's the point 3, 3, negative 2. So we're going to name it by its vector, 3, 3, sorry, 3, negative 3, 2, okay? And then what do you say? From there, so that, that point is going to be our point on the line, a known point on the line. And then from there, we're going to have a vector that's going to give us the direction of the line. So that vector will be parallel to the line. And by putting that vector's tail on our known point, like this, then the tip of the direction vector will give us another point on the line. All right, so let me do that for So here, here it is for t equals 1. So here's my direction vector, negative 1, 2, 1. And so if I go to my point on the line, and now in, in the direction vector, I put the direction vector's tail on my point, now the tip of the direction vector is going to give me another point on the line. See that? So therefore, the vector sum of those two vectors is... A point on the line, right? So the vector sum will be the vector that that from the origin points at that point. Right? The vector sum is that. So now that vector, that red one, points right, the tip of the vector is a point on the line. So we say that XYZ, which is representing every point. This is a variable vector, right? That's every point on a line can be written as our known point, in this case, 3, negative 3, 2, the vector that, plus every scalar multiple of the direction vector, which was negative 1, 2, 1. So this is, this is the case when t equals 1. This, this point I'm showing you here is the case when t equals 1. And then I uh, get the point. What point is that? Right, so when t equals 1, so how does this generate points? By choosing different scalar multiples of the, of the direction vector. So now t equals 1, so then it's going to be 2, negative 1, 3. And there's that point, 2, negative 1, 3. Okay, when t equals 0, what point do we get? The given point that we started with. That's that one. So then let's do t equals, uh, say, negative 1. When t equals negative 1, what point do we get? And so let me show you that. So I'm showing you right now the case when t equals 1. Here's the case when t equals 0. When t equals negative 1, we get this point. So we're, again, we're going to go 3, negative 3, 2, plus now negative 1 times negative 1. 2, 1, which is then this vector, and that gives us this point. What point is that? 4, negative 5, 1. See how this works? Is it better than Tuesday? Is it making more sense? Okay, 
another t value. 2t equals negative 2. And I'll show you that. So I'm going to show you what t equals negative 2 looks like. So t equals negative 2. That's there. You're going to take that first vector, our known vector, add negative 2 times the direction vector, and that puts us right here in space. And that point is, or the vector, 5, negative 7, 0. And let's just do one more. t equals positive 2. So when t equals positive 2, come way back here. There's t equals positive 2. That's this point right here. They're saying 1, 1, 4. Agree? So now, imagine doing that for every value of t, every real number. What would you get? So I, I, try, I plotted those points. Uh, each time we picked a t, I plotted the point in space, right? That was the sum of the black and then the scalar multiple of the blue. And I plotted that resulting point. If I were to do that for every value of t, do you imagine what you would get? Yeah. So, right, because that direction vector is just extending and retracting along a line, right? And every time we pick a t, we get a point at the end of that direction vector. So if you do it for every t, every real number, you get that. So do you see how lines work? So then we talked about, um, so here's the equation of this line. And then we could break it up into its parametric equations, right? Take it one component at a time. By doing the, by doing the vector um, operations over here on the right. So the x-coordinate would be what? 3 plus, yeah, so, so then we distribute the t, right? The scalar multiplication, we can multiply the t in. And then add the vectors, which means add the, add the components. So when we do that, we get x equals 3 minus t. y equals, everyone write it down. Just make sure you got it. Write down what y would be and what z would be according to this vector equation of y. Those are called the parametric equations of the y. Did you get the y right here? So you got negative 3 plus 2t, agree? And way there in the back, what did you get for z? Yeah. Nice enough? Yeah. I just didn't hear you. 2 plus t, she said. Agree? Okay, so there's, these are the two main forms that we'll deal with. There's also a symmetric form, but we're, so we're not going to deal with that. I think in the recitation they talked about symmetric form. Don't worry about that. So we just want the vector equation of the line. That's that first one we did, the horizontal version. And then the separate parametric equations of the line. So I have a few questions now. So we're going to call this one L2, right? So L1 was the one we did on the, the example we did on, on uh, Tuesday. So this will be L2. This example will be L2. Okay, and so what I want you to do is, what's the name of the question again? I wrote where I shouldn't have written. Don't want to erase all that. <coughs> Too bad. Okay. I've got everything I've written, I'm going to have to erase what I wrote. 
So the stuff that I wrote down. Are we good? Can I race? Okay, so we have some questions. Let's just maybe take the first three. So can you find the point where the line intersects the plane y equals 15? Can you do that? So you think about how those equations work. How do we generate points? Individual values of t each generate a different point on that line. So now you want the point that that is on that line that has the y value of 15. Can you get the, the, the order triple? Okay. At what point does the line intersect the yz plane? Okay. And then write an equation of a line parallel to L2 through the point 5, 2, negative 1. Okay. So this will be, uh, let's, let's just do these for your notes. Let's just do these for your notes, not for your pink sheet yet. These are the easy ones, okay? These are the easy ones. So maybe two minutes, two or three minutes. Talk if you're not sure, but these, these are the easy ones, trust me, okay? So notice in the parametric equation, what was, what is this? Where did that come from? What's what's that? That was our known point, right? See that? That was our known point. And then where do you see the direction in the parametric equations? Be specific. The coefficients of t, right? The co these coefficients of t. See, negative one, two, one. That was our direction. So that's how those those play out into the parametric equations. Your direction is negative 1, 2, 1. So this new line that's parallel to L2, what do you know about it? Yep, so, so we'll call that L3, okay? We'll call that L3. L3 then is, we'll just go right to the parametric equations. What, you write down your known point, and then plus. What's its direction? If it's parallel to L, if it's parallel, then it's a, you can use the same direction vector, right? Parallel, same direction vector. So, you, so that, that's what you need to write a line. You need a point, and you need a direction. So when you're ever asked to, whenever you're asked to create a line, you try to figure out, okay, I got to get a point on that line, and I got to get a, a vector parallel to it, and that could be its direction. Are we good on one through three? Okay, harder. So this, so let's see, I guess I'm calling L3 was from number three, and then L, L4 is from number four. Oh, wait a sec. No, those, that's a different set of lines. Okay, so five, I have a, I have a different, uh, so for number five, I have a, a new set of lines for you. So we'll call this one L3. We'll call this one L4. And then we'll call these L5 and L6. Okay, so now uh, four is a more cha challenging problem. Or is a more challenging problem? Can you imagine what it's asking? So there's some point, 1, 1, 1. I'll draw it here. Say 1, 1, 1. So there's the point, 1, 1, 1. I want the, the line that's through that point and also orthogonal to the line, meaning intersecting the line and orthogonal to it when it intersects the line. Can you imagine that? Is it 
How are we going to do that? So what do we need to write the equation of a line? Point and direction. We have either of those? We got the point. Half done. Well, I was kidding. So really this whole problem is about what's the direction vector of this line, right? What's the direction of this vector of this line? And so we know that that direction vector is going to be what? Orthogonal to this. Is there just one vector that's orthogonal to the direction vector of our original line? Or are there more than one? Many, right? In three in three dimensional space. In 2D, there would just be one given a given a vector in 2D. There would only be there may be two, right? But there'd be two two vectors that would be orthogonal to another vector, right? So there would be All scalar multiples of this, all scalar multiples of this, basically. But in 3D, can you imagine now that there's lots and lots of vectors orthogonal to that one because you could you could rotate that all the way around. Did you see that? Okay, so this that's what makes this a challenging problem. So we need to specifically get what? We could get this vector right here, right? The, with it, it, with its, if I put its tail on the line, and its tip at our point, and it, it's such that it would be orthogonal to the line. So if we can get that, that would be a direction vector. How are we going to get that? Any ideas? Cross product, cross product of what? Dot product. Okay, so so uh, what was the direction vector of our of our red line? Negative one, two, one. And this one now our unknown direction vector, call it A B C. So is the dot product gonna help here? Negative one A plus two B plus C equals Does that allow us to find ABC? One equation with three variables, right? So it's true. It's a true statement. It's true that those will be those dot product will drop will be zero, but it's too open ended, right? There's lots of possibilities there, and we need this specific one. Other ideas. You have an idea? No. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like you're saying find the coordinates of that point. Okay. Right. Which is essentially once we have the coordinates of that point, we essentially have this vector, right? That that's that goes without saying because we'd have the tip and the tail. So say x, y, z. OK, so how are we going to get this? And you talked about the distance. How can we get the distance? OK, idea? So let me give you a hint. We want to use this point, too. What's this point? Our given point of L, L2. What's 3, negative 3, 2. So we've got this point, 1, 1, 1. We know it's, on our, it's off of the L2, but it's on our new line. We've got this original point on our original line, and then x, y, z.
but parametric equations represent a line, not just a point. Yeah? That's your projection. What do you want to project onto where? Okay, so um, it's getting a little messy here. So let me get rid of some stuff here. All right, so you want to you wanna take the vector from, can I start from here at the tail? Mm -hmm. This vector, from our known point on the original line to the known point on the new line, okay? Oh yeah, but what is that? What, what are you talking about? The vector projection of that onto what? Right, so if we take the vector projection of this vector from 3, negative 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, onto the direction vector of this line, which is essentially just this parallel, this original line, we'll get what? We won't get a distance. We're going to get this vector. The vector from 3, negative 3, 2 to that key point on the line, right, that that's makes the orthogonal, right? So this right here is the vector projection of the black vector here, so we'll call that A, onto the direction vector of our original line, right? So who remembers that formula? What would that be? A dot v of the original line over, sorry, magnitude of a squared, magnitude of a squared, times And that would be the red vector. And that would be this key vector from that point to our to our key point. All right, did I lose anybody? Ask if I lost you. This is getting a little complicated. But we need to find this key point on the original line that is, is the point such that when you extend that point to our given point on our the line we're trying to write. Those are both on the line, right? So, so the line through the point orthogonal to our given line is going to be intersect our given line at that point, and that's the point we're trying to find. So if we project this black vector here onto our line, or in other words, onto the direction vector of our line, which I'm calling that's V, so V for line 2, so I'll call it V2, I'm going to get that red vector. And then what's the roadmap from here then? So can you do it from there? We're not going to do all the math. We're just going to talk it through. So I've got this red vector. How do I get that point right there? Yep. Well said. That's what you all should be thinking, right? That's a real basic thing. He's saying the components of the red vector are the changes. And I, he could add those changes to 3, negative 3, 2, and what would that give you? That would give you that point, and now you're home free, right? Because you've got a point. You've got now you've got two points on the line. Either point you could use as your point on the line, and then with two points on the line, you can determine the direction vector, that blue vector right there. Did you follow it? Ask now, please, if you're lost. Someone else is too. Yeah. What am I repeating? The whole thing? He's, that, all he said was to get the coordinates of this point right here. If we knew the red vector, how would we get the coordinates of that point? That's an easy question, right? Because we have the coordinates of the tail, and we need the coordinates of the tip. If 
if that's not clear, then none of this is going to be clear. That's like, a, that's like the first thing we talked about in vectors. So the relationship between the tip point and the tail point and the vector itself. The components of the vector are the changes. So you have to have a scheme for easily getting, getting every, given any two of those things. Given the two points, get the vector. Given the vector in the tail, get the tip. Given the vector in the tip, get the tail. That should be super easy, or else all this stuff is, there's no, we're not having no progress at all. So given the tail and the vector, do you have a scheme for quickly getting the tip? You should. Yeah. OK, sure. <coughs> I was just tr trusting everybody. <coughs> I don't have it memorized. I just figure it out. So is it, should it be a dot v over a squared a or v squared v? Is it v squared v? Yeah. I want the, the projection of a onto v, which is the direction of this. Is it going to be v and v? Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Thanks for bringing that up. That's important. You gotta have that right. So that gives us the red vector. Is that correct? And the red vector leads us to the key point. This one here. And then the key point with our given point can give us the direction of our new line, right? I get, was this L4? Okay. Okay, any questions on, did you have a question over here? Did you have a question over there? Is it better? OK, so that's the roadmap here. That's the, the projection of the black one onto the, the direction of the given line. Gives us the red vector that I'm showing. And then the red vector gives us that key point on the existing line, which gives us the direction vector of our line, which then you can write down the equation of our line, the new one. OK. Any questions on that? So the rest is just cranking out the math, cranking out the math. OK, so given two lines, there's really uh, four possibilities. They could be the same line, right? We know there's lots and lots of ways to write the same line, because you could use any point on the line, and you could have any, any vector parallel to the line, right? So there's an infinite number of points on the line. There's an infinite number of direction vectors that we could choose, right? That means that. Two lines that look totally different could be the exact same line. So are they the same line? Are they parallel, which would mean what? They have the same direction, but no points in common. Intersecting in, in one point, or skew, which we talked about earlier. So uh, here's two different lines. So how are we going to figure this out? So the first thing you want to do is let's kind of group these together. Can we conclude that? They're the same or parallel, or rule that out. How how would we do that? So so let's start with start with. Can we say yes? They're the same or parallel, or no? They're not the same or not parallel. How would what would we look for? Yes, sir. Does that to be the same? Same exact direction vector. Scalar multiples of each other, right? So, it, it, so, what's our direction vector for L five? Seven six six. What's our direction vector for? So let's call that V five. What's our direction vector for? Line six. Eight eight nine. Are they the same or parallel? So what's an example of what we'd be looking for 
in the direction vector of 6 to conclude, yes, they are parallel. Yeah. Right. What's that? Yeah, if it was 14, 12, 12. Or give me another example. 7 halves, 3, 3. How about, how about negative 21, negative 18, negative 18? See it? So any, if, as long as this is any scalar multiple of that one, then we can intersect your skewer down. It's either the same line or parallel lines. Here we don't have that. So either now we're intersecting or we're skewed. How are we going to figure that out? Any ideas? Yes, sir? Okay. So if they're intersecting, then it's kind of like, how would we find that point of intersection? It would be some value of t and some value of s that would give us what? Same x, same y, and the same z. So to figure that out, we're going to do that. We're going to say, if this exists, then 20 plus 7t would have to equal negative 17 plus 8s. And also, 18 plus 6t would have to be negative 16 plus 8s. Do you see it? Yeah, so, so we're testing to see if they intersect or not. If, if they intersect, then there has to be a t value and a separate s value that generate the same order triple. Does that make sense? So there's some value of t and some other value of s that would give us the same x, y, z triple, and that would be the point of intersection. So we're, like, we're saying, okay, that's true. So therefore, x has to be the same and y has to be the same. Well, now this is enough to, de to figure out what the what the t and s are that would do it. So any way you can solve system of equations, you're welcome to do that. This is very rigged just to subtract the second one from the first. See that? Because you got 8s and 8s. So if I just subtract that second equation, those are going to go away. See that? And I'm going to have 2 plus t equals minus 1 t equals minus 3. Use either equation over here, and you're going to get s equals, and we got to get two. Over here, we get uh, negative one, so I got to get negative one. That's right, s is two. Okay, now that does that mean they intersect? That, that's only the the t and the s that give us the same x and y values. So if they intersect, then what would have to happen? These, the, this t and this s would have to give me the same z. So if they do give me the same z, conclusion. If they don't give me the same z, then we got skew lines. You see that? Then there's, if, if they don't give me the same z, then there's no s and t that will give me the same order triple. If they do give me the same z, then I do have an s. And so what's the conclusion? Do they? 17 plus negative 18. I'm plugging t equals negative 3 in. Gives me z equals negative 1. That's from the t's. And then 2 in here. 18 plus negative 19. Negative 1. Intersecting lines. What's the point of intersection? Is it negative 3, 2, negative 1? Is that the point of intersection? No, right? This is the, the t value that gets me the point of intersection in the first line. The s value that gets me the point of intersection in the second line. So I'm going to have to get those x and y coordinates. So what is it? Minus 1, 0, and negative 1. Intersecting. Okay, we need to move on to planes. We gotta get going on planes. Any questions on lines? So it's really important that um, there's so many different, especially when we get to planes, there's so many different <laughs> ways they could frame a problem with planes and lines and points in space that you don't wanna try to possibly memorize a method for every situation. You wanna be just understand and be good at 
working with lines and planes. That's the real goal of doing all these different types of problems. Not to memorize a, a procedure for each, but just to get really, like, to know your way around lines and planes so that if I throw you something even different on the test that you've never seen before, you could you could solve it. Okay? That's what our goal is. So let's look at planes now. So the first thing we're going to talk about with a plane is there's kind of two things about a plane, location and orientation, right? So planes, they have an orientation relative to the axes, relative to the coordinate planes, right? So what would determine, so would a single point determine the orientation of a plane? Like it's how it's angled relative to the axes. That's what I'm talking about, orientation, like how it's, how it's positioned, right? Like, is it this way, or is it this way, or is it this way, right? So would a single point give us an orientation of a plane? Clearly mm -hmm. not. What about a single <coughs> vector? Could a single vector give us an orientation of a plane? So I didn't say a single vector in the plane. So a vector, like, that you could place in the plane, parallel to it, would that give you an orientation of the plane? So for instance... If I drew a vector, and imagine this vector is, I'm going to put this vector in the plane. So it's parallel to the plane, so I'm going to place it in the plane. Does that give us that orientation? Do you see that there's an infinite number of planes that are parallel to that vector? That could contain that vector. Like, imagine making that a hinge, that vector a hinge, and then rotating that plane around the hinge. Those are all the different planes that would be parallel to that vector. So a vector parallel to the plane will not fix the orientation. But my question remains, is there a single vector that would give us the orientation of the plane? OK, what about orthogonal to the plane? So a vector that's orthogonal to the plane, would that lock down its orientation? Does that lock down how it's angled, positioned relative to the axes. It does, right? So that's how we start. We start with, and I'm glad you said the word normal. I want to point that out. This word normal is, is, is really another a synonymous for orthogonal. So normal vectors mean that they're orthogonal. A vector that's normal to a plane is orthogonal to the plane. So normal is just another word for orthogonal. You're going to see that a lot. So yeah, so this normal vector locks down how that thing is positioned. But it does not lock down where it is, right? So now we've got an infinite number of planes <laughs> parallel to that one that are that all have that same orthogonal vector, right? So then we need a point on the plane. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna so there's that's a given that's a given point on the plane, just like we had before. So we'll call that uh, x naught and we'll have it as a vector. So the given point is x naught y not z not that's a given point as a vector as a position vector and then i'm i took the the normal vector and i put its tail on that point but that it could be anywhere okay so that that normal vector it could be anywhere doesn't have to be there, but um, for where we're going, I put it on there, okay? Now I'm going to have a vector that represents, just like a line, I'm going to have a vector that represents every point in the plane. Okay? So this vector could move around and it's going to represent every single point on the plane. Okay? So it's, imagine that thing moving around and representing every single point. So it could, it's going to, the tip of it as a position vector is every single point on the plane. Okay, very good. All right, making sense so far? So 
what's the the given point is this one here. It's fixed. It's a point we know. This is going to represent every point on the plane. It's red. It might not look too red, but so then again, that's going to be x, y, z. Our normal vector. is A, B, C. Okay, one more vector. So if I take the vector X, what would be true about the vector X, Y, Z? So given any point in the plane, minus the vector X naught, Y naught, Z naught. What could you say about that vector? It's going to be... Yeah, on or parallel to the plane, right? On or parallel to the plane. Okay, so that's the pink one. The pink one is from any point on the plane, the vector to any point on the plane, minus the given point. I'm, I don't have, I have ran, out of, ran out of colors. So I'll just write it up here. So this one here is what? X, Y, Z. All points, any point, minus our given point. X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Now, what relationship do we have that's true? This, what do you see? So that, that vector that's parallel to the plane, what has to be true about that? Then, if it's parallel to the plane, it's what? Orthogonal to which one? Normal. The normal one. So you see that that this parallel vector has to be orthogonal to the normal vector of the plane, and so that gives us the relationship. So then, what about so what about this vector and this vector? So if I took the vector, uh, not cross product, dot product would be. Zero. So if I take the vector x minus x naught, y minus y naught, this is the pink one, the pink one, z minus z naught, and dot it with a, b, c, I'll get zero. And that sets up, that. that's the main, the start of our equation of the plane. You're going to Take the dot product of the vector parallel or in the plane with the normal vector, and that has to be that has to be zero. So no matter, no matter where that pink one is, it's it's always parallel to the plane, so it's always orthogonal to the blue one. See that? If I turn on sides a little bit, there we go, right there. So no matter where, no matter what point I pick in the plane, that's the red vector, all points in the plane. The pink one, the difference, will always be a vector parallel and therefore orthogonal to the normal vector of the plane. So now let's do the dot product. When we do the dot product, we get a times x minus x naught plus b times y minus y naught plus c times z minus z naught. I don't like my lectures either. Equals zero. Okay, so that's, that's one form. Okay, look, and so now, where did this play out? So what do you see here? A, B, C is... Normal vector to the plane, it's orthogonal to the plane. X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Given point, a known point, so you're going to put numbers in there. X, Y, Z then represent all the points in the plane. So they're going to stay X, Y, Z, right? And then any ordered triple X, Y, Z that makes that true is on the plane, right? So then these stay X, Y, Z, and every ordered triple X, Y, Z that make this thing equal to zero are, is a point on the plane. Any order triple x, y, z that doesn't make this zero is a point not on the plane. 
all right, we can take this one step further. We can do AX plus BY plus CZ. Okay, would equal what? AX naught on the other side plus BY naught on the other side plus CZ naught on the other side, which are all known values, right? Those are products of known values. We can just call those all D. That's just a constant, right? A times X naught, move it over. B times Y naught, move it over. C times Z naught, move, and those are all known numbers. Call them D. So these are two common equations of planes that you'll see. Or I should say, when you're asked to write a plane, you're going to use this one. Because you're going to figure out what the normal vector is, you're going to figure out what your known point is, and you're going to plug it into that. But often when you're given a plane and asked to find something else, you'll be often given it in this form. So what do you know? What's the one thing you know right off the bat given this form? Normal vector, A, B, C. Okay. If you want to find points on the plane, then you're going to have to pick. So you pick an X, pick a Y, solve for Z. That's what, that'll be a point on the plane. Pick another X and another Y, solve for Z. That'll be a point on the plane. Questions on where a plane comes from, the equation of a plane. Yeah, if you're, if you're given the equation of the plane, you'll be given like 3x minus 2y plus z equals 5. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's just, we got two minutes left. At least do a couple easy examples. All right, questions before we... Could you write the equation of the plane? This is P1, so I didn't give you the didn't give them to you though. So this one, our known point is uh, okay. Known points for P1. One negative one zero. This is one negative one zero. And 2, negative 2, 1 is the, this one. So this is 2, negative 2, 1 is the normal vector to the plane. And this known vector is 1, negative 1, 0. Is that what I said? Okay, so a couple of easy questions just to finish up here. Let's do these for the sheet so we have something to turn in. So that's plane one, P1. P1 is the plane that has normal vector 2, negative 2, 1, and point 1, negative 1, 0. So write the equation of a new, new plane. You write the equation of a new plane that's parallel to this one and goes to the point negative 5, 2, 3. Negative 3, negative 3 right. Negative 5, 2, negative 3. So you should have the two things you need. You can just write it down, right? You can go to this one right here got the two things you need, you can just write it down. No math to do, if you understand what we're talking about. Second one, write the equation of the line orthogonal to the original plane to the point negative 1, negative 4, 0. Same thing. You can just write it down. There's no math to do. If you follow, if you've got the image right in your head, you've understood everything. 